the relationship with the studio is very special. I've been working here continuously for 15 years. What we see now is an accumulation of all those years. One of the big breakthroughs for me in my work was when I realized the impact that color had on the drawings. I had been doing wall drawings in black and white, sometimes a red with a black and white drawing. I think of them essentially as having sculptural space and not painterly space. I realized that it was possible to make an incredible transformation of how people responded to the image by the inclusion of color. It started with me painting the room's colors. The paintings have come out of installations. The color specifies the image. That gives the object a kind of identity. When I started making the drawings, my whole idea was to have a styleless way of drawing, which is why I drew them in tape, so there was no sign of my hand. I didn't invent anything, I didn't change anything. I drew the object exactly as I saw it, and I kind of withdrew from it. So what I was trying to do was to get a drawing which had the same character that the objects themselves have. Ironically, over time, my no style has become recognized to be my style. I really discovered the tape in the 60s, but when I went to make the drawings of objects, I remembered the tape and went back to it. The tape is a very physicalized way of drawing. It's not making a mark, it is actually physically laying down the line. That sense of the physicality of the world is really very important to me, which is one of the reasons why I used real objects. My early work was really to do with sculpture. I got interested in objects, and part of it was trying to understand what was the difference between an object that was not a sculpture and an object that was a sculpture. All the things we normally make, we make them because we have a purpose. Everything is functional. And so I tried to make sculptures that engage the question of usefulness. Then I changed so I'm making images of the same kinds of objects. I got interested in the idea of, of what it was to make an image of something. What is the language of image making? And I've just built a vocabulary of these images. Some objects stay relevant or become relevant again to me. These are beautiful, the colors are fabulous. It's been interesting for me to see the sculptures indoors. They're very unusual as sculptures because the sculptures of drawings of objects. The sculpture is a way of materializing a drawing and of making a drawing stand in space independent of a sheet of paper, a surface. They're two-dimensional objects given three-dimensional life. This bit ends and this has this little it's, the, the, it's those little things. That's what I get into the drawings. Oh, is yeah. the, is because they're very close to being they're very close to being cartoonish, but they always have details that no cartoon would ever have. Michael has for many years has been known as a colorist, he's been known as a painter. I think this provides this show particularly a new opportunity for people to look at his work in a very different light. We have to separate the ball and the headphones because of the roundness. This one, somewhere in here. See, this was always my, my idea, again, that you can step through here. Sculptures use three-dimensional form in order to uh, exist in space. 
and mine are very unusual in that they are used two-dimensional form to do the same thing. They are giant things. They have enormous presence, but they have almost no mass. And I want them to look like they are free-floating. And the only way to do that is to have a support system that you bury. The twist is so beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. I've always had a sense of wanting to create the experience of wonderment, which is one of the reasons for making things very big. There's nothing that makes people feel more touched than to suddenly see a familiar thing enormous. When the sculptures have been shown outdoors, one of the things I feel very successful is they're essentially transparent. And so if you have them in a landscape, the landscape runs right through them. And it places the object within the landscape in a very particular way. It becomes part of the landscape. And as you move around, the bit of the landscape that's in the object changes. Whereas when you put them in the gallery, you see the images quite differently and you really get a sense that these are sculptures of drawings and the sense that you can enter the world of the drawing. It seems very potent. When I did the room paintings, where I painted the entire room and painted images on the walls, I felt very strongly that what I was doing was essentially making a painting that people could walk into. I feel with the sculptures, when particularly seeing them indoors, is that you're in the world of the drawing, you can see through them, you can walk around. And of course, because they are two-dimensional, and if you move to the side, they disappear entirely and become a single colored line. I think what I've been trying to play with in the language of two dimensions is clearer in this exhibition than ever before. And one of the things that interested me from the beginning was ordinariness. If there's any magic in the world, anything special, it's in the most simple things. It's just a question of recognizing it. <laughs>